dog thing by Cory Sanders. My dog is a girl. She is a black puppy. And she <coughs> is three and a half years old. My dog, whenever my dog sees me, he wags her tail. I love this story, Cory. It's excellent. Uh, uh, well, can, wait, can I see the illustration? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, uh, wait. So, Apple was. Very, very good. Okay, how about Christina? Do you have a story you'd like to read first, quickly? Okay. <laughs> You're starting with part three? Yeah, I read part two, one and two. Just start with part one, because these people on the video never saw part one. Oh. Why don't you show the your front part of your head in the way? Okay. Once upon a time, there was... I didn't dedicate it to anybody. Oh, you didn't dedicate it yet? Okay. Who are you going to dedicate it to? My grandmother. Oh, okay. Once upon a time, there was a very, very little pig. He was a little one. One day, he got <coughs> bigger and bigger. Then he got bigger. And, and he got bigger. Wow, he got big. Wait, can I see the illustration? Could you hold it up a little? Okay, good. Sorry, keep going. Then he got a little bit bigger, and he was the biggest pig in the whole world. Just then, the, ba the pig got bigger. Then he got bigger in a couple of days. The big runt got even bigger. He had to go away. Then I got sad, but I asked my mom, can you get me another one? And it was Christmas. I got <coughs> a little pig, and he was... <laughs> he was the littlest pig I had ever had for a Christmas party. Then in a couple of days, the pig got a little bit bigger. And he did not, not get any bit bigger. I thought he was a little runt. But a couple of days later, Peter's bus 244, the lion. The children are just now coming in. They do not have tardy clips. Thank you. A little bit bigger. And he didn't stop growing. He got bigger and bigger, and he was the biggest kid. I had a smile on my face, and he got a reward, and I got a reward, too. I got to keep him, and I got to make him a big house. I was the happiest girl in the world. Dedicated to my sister. Once upon a time, there was a rabbit named Jack. He lived in the forest. In the forest lived a little girl, too. Her name is Jennifer. One day, Jennifer went out for a 
spot in the forest. She was in the forest and she saw a little house. I live in the forest. She said, I never saw a house like that. Never have. My monkey in a box. He had a box. He had a box. He had a monkey. He had a, some fun. He and she play. He and she will play. Once upon a time, we came to the dentist. He wanted was wasn't feeling good because all his teeth fell out. He went out of town and he never came back. His family was happy. His dog was held up. Who did you dedicate your book to? Aw, show us some of your good pictures. Who's that? Oh. Can you show us your author's page? About the author, all about you. You know, the page all about you at the end. Oh, I love that one about your football story, but show us the one at the end. Oh, shoot, I forgot I was taking pictures. All right, wait a second. Very good, Mr. Crenshaw. I am Good. Thank you, Heather. Going, going to skate man.
Can I see it a little? Yeah. Oh, I can't. See, it's very good to me. I am little. I said I am big. My mom is. My mom said I love mermaids. Love you. Said I said I love you too. Said my mom I can swim. I said I can swim too. Said my mom. Very, very, very nice. Can I get this picture too? This is my mom. This is me. I am a mermaid. Teddy is a fluffy bear that is brown. Where there was a Teddy named Joe. He lived in a cottage. In the forest, he had a baby brother that always ate his honey and always bothered, bothered him. You want to show us, um, who did you dedicate this book to? Mom and Dad. Do you want to show us your author's page? At the very back, all about Robert, Mr. Williams. Oh, very good. And what was your favorite story? What was your favorite story in your book? Yeah, Carl's Teddy. Oh, okay. If I Vanessa. Excellent. I dedicate this book to my two sisters. I lost little run. I was sad. I found little run and I was happy. Little run is my favorite pet. Dad, Dad kidnapped Little Run, and I was very sad. I taught him a lesson, and both of us were happy. One, two, three. Okay, now we're on this page, right? Okay, go ahead. Little Run has a mother and six brothers and six sisters, and I like to play with them. The end. I lost my juice. I lost my juice when I was playing. Today my dad gave me a bag and put it into my car. named Teddy. He likes to run in his box. When he eats, he dumps over his food. He's brown and white, soft and furry. Teddy sleeps in his nest in a corner. He likes to bury himself. I also have a cat named Flipper. She's brown, white, and black. She likes to sleep on my bed. So, illustrated by Michelle. Part one. Once there was three boys, they were throwing tomatoes at each other. One hit me on the head. I said, that hit me. Then I got on your, our bikes. My cousin was there. She left, and I said, that was not funny. I wish by James Baker. I had... Start again. I wish 
there was there was a cure for cancer. We have a run every week to per to find to raise money <laughs> money to cure it. <laughs> Try reading it by yourself now. Just take your time. You got nervous. So take your time and point. If I had a wish by James Baker, I wish there was a cure for cancer. <laughs> See how good you're doing? My grandfather died of it. We have a run every year, week to prevent down in Florida to raise money to find it. Find what? Point it, find. Now finish. To, to raise. No, it doesn't say raise. Oh, cure it. I'm sorry. To cure it. Can we help us with somebody get new at the door? Amy needs us uh, in school. I work on in school. I teach you. What's today? What's your favorite? What's today? What's important about today? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. <coughs> Go ahead, Chili. Let me see the picture. Oops, I missed you. What a cute baby in a carriage. Wow. I like styles by kids. I like birds. 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 Very good, Kelly. I like this Cristiano. <laughs> Let me see the picture. Very good. I said that it came this book to miss my teacher. Very good. I like you read that. My story by La Very good. Hi, Timmy. What is that you have right there? Pictionary. A Pictionary? What's a Pictionary for? To find words in the Pictionary. 
Oh, and, and what, what words did you find for the B page? Bear. Oh, and what did you find for the C page? Computer. Very good. I like your Pictionary. And let's come over here. These children are busy writing their stories. <coughs> I can't come that far. Jill, what do you have there? <laughs> a field tip notebook. Could you hold it up so we can see the front of it? I'm going to get a close up. Okay, hold it real still. And could you show us a picture from one of your field trips that you made in your notebook? And what's that picture from? It's a little sideways. And who's that picture of? A bear. Oh, who is that bear? Do you remember who that was? At the zoo? Wow. Susie. And how old was she? Right, that, is that why you wrote that down? Do you have any other pictures you want to show us from the field trip notebook? Oh, what's that picture of? Do you remember? A monkey. Very good. Okay, Heather, what do you have here? What's that, Heather? It's a, a writing notebook. Oh, and how do you use that? He, um, he, um, sent the spell right apple. Mm -hmm. He look on the A case and um, the teacher write it down. Oh, and what if you had to spell, if you didn't know how to spell camel? Can I see what's on your C page? Could you hold it up so we can see your sheet? Oh, you have a lot on your C page. You have Cat and Charlie and Clock and Chicago. Why'd you have Chicago? What did you write about Chicago? What my team. Oh, why did you have Charlie? Because that's my name of my cat. Very good. Okay, let me see. Who else was I going to ask something? Renee! Now, if you were writing a story, what is the first thing you do? Go and get it. Oh, can you show us the box you get that out of? Okay, and you get a blank book. And then, then what do you do? And what's that say? Finished. Finished oh. stories. And then after the finished stories, where does it go? What happens then? Mm. Oops, I didn't have you on camera. Sorry. What did you say? Okay, and show us one of the finished books. Can you show us one of her stories? Just so we can see what it's like if it's typed. Oh, okay. And who makes the illustrations? Kelly. Whoever writes the book, oh. huh? Kim. Kim. Oh, whoever writes the book. 
Okay, and what's that yellow thing back there? Behind you, with the boxes on it. Wait a second, let me move this cord thing. Um, mailbox. And what are, they, what are they for? They're for mail. And, what, like, what do you write? Have you ever written a letter to somebody? Mm -hmm. Who'd you write to? Christina. Christina. What'd you write about? How her brother was doing. Oh, her little brother? Okay, and what's this chair over here? The author's chair. The author's chair? Mm -hmm. And what, what do you use that for? To sit and read stories. Oh, very good, thank you. And what's this game behind you, just out of curiosity? Um, Jeopardy. And what, how do you play this Jeopardy game? You take the card out. Uh-huh. Ask him. You ask him the question. Ask him the question. And who took place in the story? And what took place in the story? That's one of the questions. Very good. And then if they get it right, what happens? The points. Very good. Thank you very much. I think we've got everything from the writer's workshop. And Adam, now what grade are you in? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, and what are you here for? I am here to help uh, these people spell. The, the kids, and Adam's one of our older buddies, and, and the, the other kids are the younger buddies. And let me see. Who's, you seem to be writing a story, Amanda. Let me see, what, what story are you writing about? Butterfly Billy. Butterfly Billy, and this is your sloppy copy, huh? You like Butterfly Billy, don't you? Yeah. The, and ne the next story I'm going to do, Susan Scribble, and then a dog called Kitty. Oh, you have a lot of silly stories. Where do you get your ideas? Just I don't come, know. You're just creative and smart, huh? And Timmy, what are you writing about? My, my brother and my dad on the motorcycle. Oh, is Adam helping you? I'm done. You want to read it for us? Part two. My brother and daddy on the motorcycle. Oh, that's a good start. But now let's see, what, what do you think happened? Well, you got to tell a little more. It's good so far. I love it. But just tell me, you don't have to write, but what do you think you want to write next? Your brother and your daddy on the motorcycle, and then what happened? <laughs> now let him tell it himself. He was there. What happened when they got on the motorcycle? What did they do? They went around the block. Oh, that would be good to write next. Another good thing, you might follow the, the rules of a story. You might tell what your brother and your daddy looks like or what their brother's name is. Well, what would another good thing you... What would you ask him about his story, Renee? Mm. Ask him a question about his story so he knows what else to put in it. Does anyone have a question you can ask him? Amanda? Does anyone have a question to ask him about his story? Sounds interesting to me. Adam, what would you ask him? Timmy, when did, you, what, uh, when did your brother and your dad do this? Yesterday. Good question. Anyone else have a question? Um, Sunday. Sunday. Good question. See, now, now when you write it, maybe you might want to add Sunday. What's another question? Anyone else have a question for him? How about Heather? You have a good question. Amanda? Um, who, who rode the motorcycle who steered it? 
Oh, who, who's driving? Yeah, my dad and my brother. My You're... dad hold on to my brother holds on to my dad's hands. Wow, that's neat. They're both driving. Those are very good questions, and they might help you to write some more about the story, okay? Okay, well, I don't want to bother you guys because I know you're working very hard on your stories, but I want to thank everybody very much. Okay, you want to say goodbye? Bye, Miss Christiana. Uh, over in the Meadow, and this is the words of uh, Oliver A. Wadsworth, and he wrote them in the 1800s. And this is our dedication and our copyright. Over in the meadow, in the sand, in the sun, lived an old mother toad and her little toady one. Wink, said the mother. I wink, said the one. So he winked and he blinked in the sand and the sun. Over in the meadow, where the streams run blue, lived an old mother fish and her little fishies too. Swim, said the mother. We swim, said the two. So they swam and they leaped where the streams run blue. Over in the meadow, in a hole in a tree, lived an old mother bluebird and her little birdies three. Sing, said the mother. We sing, said the three. So they sang and were glad in the hole in the tree. Over in the meadow, in the reeds on the shore, lived an old mother muskrat and her little raddies four. Dive, said the mother. We dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. Over in the meadow, in a snug bee hive, lived a mother honey bee and her little bees five. Buzz, said the mother, we buzz, said the five, so they buzzed and they hummed in the snug bee hive. Over in the meadow, in a nest built of sticks, lived a black mother crow and her little crow six. Caw, said the mother, we caw, said the six, so they cawed and they called in their nest built of sticks. Over in the meadow, where the grass is so even, lived an old mother cricket and her little cricket seven. Chirp, said the mother, we chirp, said the seven, so they chirped cheery notes in the grass soft and even. Over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a green mother lizard and her little lizards eight. Bask, said the mother, we bask, said the eight, so they basked in the sun on the old mossy gate. Over in the meadow where the quiet pools shine lived a green mother frog and her little froggies nine. Croak, said the mother, we croak, said the nine, so they croaked and splashed where the quiet pools shine. Over in the meadow in a sly little den lived a green mother spider and her little spider's ten. Spin, said the mother, we spin, said the ten, so they spun lacy webs in their sly little den. Another unpredictable um, small book is a, my second predictable um, book is, was written by the students as a language experience story, and uh, they titled, entitled it The Whale by Mrs. Cristiano's First Grade. And this book was dedicated to Humphrey the Whale. And this book was designed and published by Cristiano's Kids Publishing Group, 1991. Once upon a time, there was a killer whale named Joey. He was black and white. He was friendly to humans. Joey lived under the water. Men caught Joey. They were going to eat him for dinner, but they didn't eat him because he was too friendly. Instead, they took him to a seaquarium. They pulled him there with a boat. They put him in a giant tank. People watched him jump out of the water and back in the water. But he was sad. They put salt water in the tank, but he was still sad. 
his friends came to visit. But he was still sad. Finally, the men decided to put him back in the ocean. Then he was happy again. The end. I was doing it. And it, this is a Kentucky Mountain Folk song. I had a cat and the cat pleased me. I fed my cat by yonder tree. The cat goes for the live feet. I had a hen and the hen pleased me. I fed my hen by yonder tree. Hen goes Jimmy Chuck, Jimmy Chuck, cat goes for the live feet. I had a duck and the duck pleased me. I fed my duck by yonder tree. Duck goes quack, quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck. Cat goes fiddle I bee. I had a goose and the goose pleased me. I fed my goose by yonder tree. Goose goes hissy, hissy. Duck goes quack, quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck. Cat goes fiddle I bee. I had a sheep and the sheep pleased me. I fed my sheep by yonder tree. Sheep goes quack, quack. Goose goes hissy, hissy. Duck goes quack, quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck. Cat goes fiddle I bee. I had a hog and the hog pleased me. I fed my hog by yonder tree. Hog goes squealy, squealy. Sheep goes bah, bah. Goose goes hissy, hissy. Duck goes quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck, cat goes fiddle I bee. I had a cow and the cow pleased me. I fed my cow by yonder tree. Cow goes moo, moo. Hog goes squealy, squealy. Sheep goes bah, bah. Goose goes hissy, hissy. Duck goes quack, quack. Hen goes chimmy chuck, chimmy chuck, cat goes fiddle I bee. And the dedication is to the dedicated to the hope that soon children won't have to concern themselves with war. I saw on television today that the soldiers have gone far away. They've gone to a place that I don't know. I don't understand why they had to go. So I decided to ask my dad the score. I said to him, Dad, what is war for? He told me about the Middle East. I didn't understand this in the least. I definitely had to know more, so I asked my mom, what is war for? She talked about the Allied defense. This started to really make no sense. Finding an answer became a chore. Then I asked, teacher, what is war for? She explained about some Arab state. To this, I could not at all relate. Grandpa would know the answer for sure. So I asked him, Gramps, what is war for? He said that war is to set men free. From what I've heard, war is not for me. This was an answer I couldn't ignore. I finally knew what war was for. We must fight for all men to be free. I wish it could be done peacefully. B-U-C-K, Buck, written and illustrated by Mrs. Cristiano's first grade. Dedicated to Buck and his cat. We went on a field trip to Anthony's Orange Grove. We rode on a school bus. We went with Mrs. Perez's class. When we got there, we met Buck took us for a tour of the orange groves. First, we drove by the alligator pond. We saw crocodiles, alligators, and turtles. 
Buck said, do you know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Buck said, an alligator has a short, stubby nose. A crocodile has a long, narrow nose. A crocodile is a man-eater. The longest crocodile was 28 feet long. Then we rode by some horses. Then we rode by a fish pond. Next to the fish pond was an oleander bush. Buck said that its berries were poisonous. Then we rode past some palmetto palms. Buck said they were Florida State tree. Finally, we were at the orange groves. Buck said that there was 250 acres and 20,000 orange trees. Buck said the orange blossom was Florida State flower. When we saw the Val Valencia orange trees, Buck said they were the last orange of the season. Buck said that 90% of all the oranges are made into juice. Buck said that the grapefruit came to Tampa in 1800 from the West Indies. Buck said the grapefruit were named after real grapes because both hang in clusters. Then we saw a butterfly. Buck said that the pickers used ladders, knapsacks, and bins. Buck said a bin equals 20 bushels of oranges. The pickers get paid by the bin. Then we saw some tall trees Buck called Australian pines. Then we saw some temple oranges, grapefruit, honeybell oranges, and tangelos. Buck said the honeybells were so juicy you had to get in a bathtub to eat one. Then we got to gator country. We saw six alligators. They were from six to nine feet long. They had 60 teeth. Buck said the female alligator lays 60 to 80 eggs when she is pregnant. She will cover them up and guard them, but not sit on them like a hen. Buck said he fed the gators dead chicken and fish once a week. Buck said they could stay underwater for 15 minutes, and the gators close their eyes underwater, but they can see through their eyelids. Buck said that alligators can smell much better than us. Buck said that some gators live to be 100 years old. Buck said that gators travel all over as long as they can find water, so we should never feed a gator or they won't be afraid of humans. Then a gator might eat your pet. Buck said that if it gets cold, the gator goes in the water to get warmer. Buck said that in Florida, there is open season on alligators, but you have to have a permit to hunt them. He said there was a certain way to hunt gators with rope and bows and arrows, but no rifles, and the person who has the permit has to do the hunting. Buck said, if a gator goes after you, zigzag because a gator can't do that. But remember that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, so you better not be zigging when you should be zagging. Then we left gator country and went into more orange groves. Buck said that nothing on the orange tree is wasted. He said that big companies like Coca-Cola use uses the pulp of the orange to make cake mix. Buck said that the wood from the orange trees is used to make bows, bow and arrows, and furniture. Buck said that a citrus tree usually lives 50 years, but one lived 470 years before it died. Buck said that Florida was the first state to have oranges and grapefruit. When we got out of the groves, we went into the room with the processing equipment. 
And there they wash the fruit, wax the fruit, and polish the fruit. Then they separate the big oranges from the little ones. This is called grating the fruit. The oranges fall into different bins. There is a pillow in the bin so that the fruit doesn't bruise when it's falling into the bin. Then we went into the juice room. In there, the skin, pulp, and seeds go one way, and the juice goes another. The juice is 100% orange juice. Buck said to be careful in the next room because there was ladies with knives in there. That was the room where the ladies made fruit salad by hand. Then we went into the packing and shipping room. This room was full of packing boxes and shipping boxes. They could hold one quarter bushel, one half bushel, three quarters of a bushel, or a full bushel. The boxes have air vents all the way around. Buck said the shipping boxes are then taken to the post office. Then we sat down at picnic tables for 100% real Florida orange juice. It was ice cold and delicious. It tasted a lot better knowing how much work goes into growing an orange. Then we said goodbye to Buck. We asked him how to spell his name for our field trip notebooks. He said B-U-C-K Buck, the end.